All right, what's going on? This video is sponsored by Shop Carl's. You know, their holiday sale is winding down, but you can still go get $10 off your first order of $25 or more using the code WELCHER10. You know, it's worth it to get a membership. You can get early access to new colors, new baits, new stuff on the site, early access to the sales and bundles and all that type of stuff. But right now we're going to jump into our January kind of baits that we're going to start using to catch some of these pre-spawn bass. And they start to move a little bit shallower or right now they're actually really deep in january but they're going to start trying to push up on some of these transition type stuff they're just going to be on the deeper side of it for the most part <clears throat> one main thing the fish center really like in january is really steep sharp drops inside the water and it doesn't have to be super deep sometimes it could be a drop that's just straight down this from you know from two feet to three feet two feet to five feet or it could be anywhere out deep from eight feet down to 20. any kind of really steep drop the fish just really seem to like you know, that early, early pre-spawn, late winter type of a stuff, which is what I have down here in January when the area of the country that I live in, it's really kind of pre-pre-spawn. They start getting in the places they're gonna sit before they move up to really pre-spawn, if that makes any sense. But I'm gonna show you all kind of the baits that I run through. Come on, be in the video. Come on, come on, Hunter. Give us, give us your January baits. Let us know what would you be throwing in January. I don't know. Too cold, too cold for Hunter in January. Well. If the wife won't go fishing, that means the fish are probably going to be a little inactive because they know best, right? Well, this time of year is definitely going to be a time of year to lean on the jig. There's one right there. It's a dirty crawl ace. And this time of year, as you can see down there below, we're going chunk all the way around. I don't second guess it. I don't change it up. I use a chunk. That's what I use. That's what I'm going to use in January. A lot of people like a big salty style bait i like the chunk the regular chunk you know a lot of a lot of brands make them doesn't really seem to matter they all do about the same thing but that's what i'm going to be throwing I actually got one rigged up right here somewhere fished with it today actually and getting rigged up to go tomorrow this is the exact one that i caught a few bass on today just a ace with a chunk on it pretty simple for me this is going to be something to this is actually a 3 8 ounce, a little bit lighter than what I normally throw. I normally am throwing a half, but I knew in the lake that I was going to, it was going to be fishing a lot of that four feet deep and shallower water, you know, docks and stuff, the backs of docks, shallow floating docks, flip it up to wood, flip it up to some rock, all that type of stuff. But I knew the deepest I was going to go probably be four, maybe five or six feet deep at all. So 3 8 ounce, pretty simple setup right here. This is my basic all around rod. This is going to be a seven foot three medium heavy. This one's actually a medium heavy extra fast i really like that for a jig because it's really good to cast it's really easy to place the bait under the dock or wherever you're trying to cast to but that bait gets into this rod gets into the backbone a little bit faster and with a jig that's really important because you got to compress that weed guard and then get that big hook through the fish's head hopefully so i like the extra fast a little better for casting but this is an indie and it's a 8.3 to 1 gear ratio concept c from 13 fishing so 20 pound sunline shooter that's kind of the jig setup that i use that's like my all around i deviate from there if i'm gonna be throwing you know a big giant 5 8 flipping jig which i'll use some in the winter i'm going to be throwing that on a 7 foot 6 heavy i'm gonna be throwing on 22 pound shooter so i just kind of scaled up from there i've got some smaller jigs i throw and i throw it around floating docks on some really clear water lakes and i'll throw a 3 8 or a half on those types of, of bodies of water on actually 18 or 16 pound line but for the most part the best all around this time of year is at 20 pound because the fish still want to be close to some heavy cover whether it be rocks wood docks anything they want to be close to some heavy cover so i'm gonna go a little bit on the safer than sorry line and do some 20 pound floor car but anyways now this is one that i don't throw a lot all year long the good old spinner bait it is a staple in the boat from I would say late November until early April. It's gonna be laying on the front deck all the time. Just kind of one of those baits that's really good at covering that vertical type of structure. So if you got a rock drop off, you got rip wrap, you got a lay down tree, anything that has good bottom contact, it's really easy to get that spinner bait and slow roll it down a piece of cover. And it's also where if you're on a warming trend or for some reason you're on a shallow piece of cover, you can, you can speed it up. So it's a bait that you can fish from 
six, seven feet deep. I mean, you can fish deeper than that, obviously, if you want to, but I just don't usually. It's a bait you can, you can cover water efficiently with from about six feet deep all the way up to six inches deep. Just depends on how slow you want to reel it. So it's a really, really good bait with a lot of draw power, especially if you can find somewhere where these shad are pushed up against one of these vertical drops. It doesn't have to be deep, like I said, or it can be deep. It's really good bait for fishing that stuff. You can just slow roll it down those breaks, those edges, you know, slow roll it down the sides of the dock, try to hit some dock posts with it. All that type of stuff is just a really good way to catch them whenever it gets really cold. So from there, this is going to be the bulk of what I do this time of year. Number one thing that I'm going to do is going to be doing some cranking. Got me two cranking rods right here. Usually have at least two laid on the front deck this time of year. You can see I've got a shallow runner, which is this one. Runs about four feet deep, something like that, three to four feet deep. And I've got actually, this is a little standard old DT6. Runs, you know, on 10 pound test, I can get it down to seven or eight feet deep pretty easily. Just one of the main keys that I want to have with crankbaits this time of year is I want them to get to the max depth extremely quickly. I don't want a crankbait that I can get to six foot, but it takes me half my cast to get it to six feet. I want a crankbait that gets down to that dip very very quickly and that's the good thing about those two that i have it doesn't have a lot of drag in the water both of those are kind of narrower wobbling baits closer to flat side baits neither one of them are a true flat side but they are more flat side ish baits and that helps them not have as much drag in the water not have quite as much buoyancy and those get down there to that depth a little bit faster so you know a lot of times casting angles are hard you know, you're, you don't always get to bomb cast it down the perfect piece of cover. So making the cast just past the cover and getting that bait down there is extremely important in the wintertime. But I always keep a couple. I keep one, like I said right there, dives four feet deep for fishing those 45 degree banks, you know, rip wrap, shallow docks, around all that type of stuff. Anything that's just four feet deep or less. And then obviously a little bit deeper one, fishing a little bit deeper stuff, fishing the bluffs, fishing the corners of rip wrap, round bridges, all that type of stuff. Cranking is going to be probably how you weigh in most your bass this time of year at least that's what i do i weigh in a bunch of bass this time of year cranking now another one that's really really good it excels on some lakes some lakes it doesn't do quite as good but that's going to be the old jerk and twitch i just got a uh i don't know what color this is but it just look like a shad i mean that's just all you're trying to imitate is a dying shad you know that's kind of the difference in what i'm doing with that is if i'm in really clear water I feel like I can get them to bite that jerkbait a little bit better. They seem to want to suspend off the edges of the brakes. They seem to want to hunker down in the big crevices of the rocks and stuff. And a lot of times winding that crankbait over them really quickly just seems to not get them to react in that really clear water. Or sometimes they'll bite it and they won't get it good. That jerkbait just kind of stays in their face for a little bit longer. And that clear water, it really draws them from a long way. It draws them up out of the cover, up out of the brush, up out of the treetops, up out of the cracks in the rocks. And I'm able to beat that jerkbait. So, that rod is actually a six foot eight medium fast action with 10 pound sunline sniper on it actually i know here we talk about shooter a ton but all those crankbaits and jerkbaits actually have sniper on it right now i've been i've been cranking and jerking and all that stuff with sniper this off season just cast so much better it's been windy it seems like it's been windy every day for two or three months and that sniper just seems to cast a little bit better into the wind so i've been using that for a while the Crankbaits are both on seven foot medium fake cranking rods. These are very, very inexpensive cranking rods. I mean, very inexpensive. And I have caught a bunch of bass on them, weighed in a bunch of bass on them. I'll, I'll get me even more of those fake rods this year because they're, they're very inexpensive, but they're extremely good for cranking those lighter, small treble hook baits. So 10 pound line, six to one gear ratio reels on the crankbaits and an 8.3 to one gear ratio reel on the jerk bait because that jerk bait i'm working it with the rod and i'm just reeling up slack with the with, with the reel so pretty much going to use the fastest one that i can possibly use for that so let's see what else we got january baits that about covers it. i do throw a vibrating jig some i used to throw it a whole lot more now the spinner bait has kind of taken over i know for the past 10 15 years the vibrating jig has been kind of the king and kind of dethroned the spinner bait, which used to be one of the best big fish baits around. And then over the past couple years, they've kind of both had their time and place. You know, the vibrating jig's good sometimes, spinner bait's good sometimes. You just kind of got to play it both and have them both out and use them both every single day and figure out what they're wanting that day and which one's best for the cover that you're fishing. But vibrating jig's another one that I throw. But other than that, pretty much going to be some flat side of crankbaits, some jerk baits. 
and some jigs. And that's about what I'm gonna throw in January, no matter where I go at all these lakes around here. You know, if I go to a couple of lakes, I'll deviate it up a little bit, throw a couple single swim baits sometimes, you know, some 2.8, some 3.3, some 3.8s, all that type of stuff on just a regular ball head jig and throw it around to some that I can see on live scope. But for the most part, these few right here is what I'm gonna use in January. So that's all I've got for January. I keep it simple. I try to stay in high percentage places. I try to stay in places where there's multiple, multiple fish and I'm throwing in front of a bunch of them every single cast because they don't all bite this time of year. It's not like it's March and everyone you run up on is gonna at least swat at your bait. It's like you better throw in the middle of 20 of them because 19 of them are not really gonna bite this time of year because they just don't have to. Their metabolism's low. They don't have to feed as much. They don't have to move as much. They're trying to conserve energy. So I try to stay in extremely high percentage places. I try to fish the most obvious stuff on the lake. The stuff that you drive by and you say, that's too obvious, that's stupid, everybody fishes that. That's what I'm gonna fish this time of year, for sure. And I'm gonna throw all four of these baits on it. So appreciate y'all watching. About to rig up. Got me another little tournament in the morning that I'm going to. So we'll see y'all.